Right now on Up With Creme, an in-person hoop fest is officially off the table. How this event compares to other large events in our area and why some of those large events are able to happen while others are forced to cancel. And of course, we're going to take you outside. A little bit of cloud cover, a little bit of smoke and a beautiful day ahead. And the state has a new high tech way to protect salmon and other endangered species deep in the rivers and the woods. Up with Crim begins now. Hi there. Thanks so much for joining us on this Thursday. I'm Tim Pham. That's right. I'm Channing Curtis. Happy, happy Friday. Happy Eve. Friday Eve. We love saying that here. I know <laughs> one day closer to the weekend. That's right. <laughs> but some sad news to start off with today. Oh, such a bummer. I know because for the second year in a row, Hoop Fest has been canceled. So the reason, of course, the growing COVID cases and hospitalizations across the inland Northwest and really the entire country. Hoop Fest says that decision was extrusive excruciatingly difficult for them to make after numerous discussions with the governor's office and the Washington State Department of Health. MultiCare, which partners with the event, also says it's in the best interest of the community to cancel the tournament. 48 hours ago, we were we were a go. Um, and then just this morning, as we continue these conversations with, you know, regional health professionals, uh, you know, even at the state level, um, we realized that it wasn't it was no longer a go. So MultiCare also released a statement of, in support of the cancellation. They say that it is best for the interest of our community, potential visitors and MultiCare staff. Now, of course, this comes as hospitals throughout the inland Northwest are reporting record breaking COVID-19 hospitalizations. This includes Kootenai Health and Coeur d'Alene. Now, Hoop Fest is not the only major event that has been canceled recently. Others are also making the tough decision. Crim 2's Nicole Hernandez joins us live now to talk about the events that are being canceled, as well as the regulations that others are putting in place to keep things going. Good morning, Nicole. Yeah, good morning, guys. So this Hoop Fest cancellation comes just about a week after Pig Out in the Park event organizers also decided to cancel that event. So both event organizers had very similar reasonings as to why they needed to cancel their events. The main one, of course, being the rising number of COVID-19 cases in our area. Pig Out in the Park organizers said that their event faced many challenges when trying to protect against COVID-19, like the venue, uncontrolled free entry, and a lot of people over the six days were all those challenges challenges, just like the spectators of Hoop Fest would be the similar challenge for that event. Other large events, though, were able to make changes to make things work, like concerts and big sports games that can regulate who gets in. Last week, Live Nations changed the regulations of their concerts. Everyone who attends has to be vaccinated or have a negative COVID-19 test. And obviously doing some of those things are really, you know, very difficult to near impossible for events like Hoop Fest and Pig Out in the Park to implement. Live in Spokane, I'm Nicole Hernandez. Now, of course, these cancellations will have a huge impact on our community. So this morning, we'll be joined by Visit Spokane to talk about the economic impact it'll have here. So if you do have a question for Visit Spokane that you want us to ask, you can text us at 509-448-2000, and we'll be sure to ask those questions on air this morning at 8, coming up on the CW22. All right, the time is now 634. Let's go ahead and take a look at the forecast because, I mean, it felt pretty nice out there this morning. It's a nice, great day to go get out and walk your dog maybe for National Dog Day. It is. Spoil your pups. Come yes. on. Ah. Treat your pup. Treat your oh. pup. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody tell Lucy's mom, but I gave her two pieces of chicken this morning. Oh, <gasps> Kylie. Then, We're telling. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I said don't tell. You sorry. Oh, ah. too late. <laughs> Hopefully they're both she still sleeping. She deserves it today. Give her the chicken. Yeah. 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 She said, hey, can I have a second? And I, she's not even supposed to get a first, but, you know. <laughs> it's her day. It's yeah. National Dog yeah, Day. Yeah, that's, that's right. I knew that this morning when I gave her chicken. <laughs> he did not. <laughs> All right, let's get you out the door early on this Thursday morning. Notice a little bit of cloud cover, a little bit of a smoky haze, a couple of breaks in those clouds, and the sun. We've got an interesting day in store across the inland northwest. 54 degrees right now with a dew point of 33. Wind out of the south southeast at about 7 miles per hour. And across much of the inland northwest, it says temps in the mid 50s. 43 in Sandpoint and 64 in Wenatchee. Air quality right now, moderate. 54 on the AQI means that, well, you can get outside and walk Fido or Lucy 
Lucy's my dog. Or Baxter. Baxter's Tim's dog. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, all of all of the above. A little bit of cloud cover right now. Notice there are some breaks in those clouds. As we move through the day, expect to get a little more break in those clouds through the middle part. Then clouds build back in this evening. Then the chance of showers overnight. Most of the activity remains off to the north. Maybe a couple of stray sprinkles here down south. Places like Spokane, Coeur d'Alene, even south of there might see a couple. But really, it's enough to ruin a car wash is about the extent of it. I'd say not even enough to call it watering the grass, so unfortunately not much there. When it comes to wind, wind does remain a bit gusty throughout the day. We'll see gusts around 15 miles per hour. That means enough to kind of move the trees around and make you think, ah, oh, what a lovely day. Now, hour by hour, we go from temps in the mid 50s this morning to the mid to upper 70s later on this afternoon. It is shaping up to be a wonderful day ahead. It is time for your morning rush. More news in less time. The trial of Chad Daybell is scheduled to begin on November 8th. However, he may not stand trial until 2022. Now, in a court document delivered to the special prosecutor on August 20th, Daybell waived his right to a speedy trial. This clears a legal path for the trial to be postponed past December. A stay remains in effect for Lori Vallow, who was found mentally unfit to stand trial. Here in the Inland Northwest, coronavirus cases continue to surge, including in North Idaho. The current surge has set a record. 96 people are currently hospitalized with COVID, 34 in critical condition, just at Kootenai Health alone. Now that surpasses the previous record of 91, and that record was achieved during a wave that took a few months to peak. That current number was reached in a matter of weeks with no end in sight. Last night's Spokane Public School Board meeting had an interesting topics on the docket to discuss. However, it was disrupted by protesters. Now, the group refused to follow the mask regulations as students return to class next week. The board president quickly kicked out the protesters and switched to an online only meeting. He says the board wants to hear from the community, but respect needs to be given to the board as well as to the Department of Health's guidance. Any of you plan on wearing your mask this evening? No. no. Okay. With that being said, this is now over. It's, it's very personal for them, right? People are talking about, so oftentimes, some very real hurt and pain that they themselves may be experiencing. So just really leaning in and trying to truly understand where they're coming from, their perspective, and the experiences that they may have. The board unanimously approved the equity policy for the school district. The recommended budget was also unanimously approved. The state has a new high-tech way to protect salmon and other endangered species deep in the woods. State Fish and Wildlife officers are installing a new hidden camera. Its motion-activated cameras have captured images of poaches and illegal fishing operations for years. But the new generation streamed back the video live, giving officers a better chance at catching offenders. I may be in my office you know, uh, an hour away and be able to watch somebody. Oh, there's a guy fishing there. I'm going to hop in my truck and go and respond. Wow, so some of the areas are so remote. By the time officers respond, bad guys are already long gone. And even though they won't all be held accountable, the state feels like the more eyes out there, the less likely it will be that someone will violate laws meant to protect wildlife. That's your morning rush. More news in less time. Let us know what's happening in your neighborhood by using the hashtag UpWithCrem on social media. Well, some kids on TikTok might have found a way to fake a positive COVID-19 test using soda or juice. Our Verified team shows us how to make sure that your children aren't lying. And we're going to take you outside, talk the weekend forecast right now. A little bit of cloud cover, maybe the chance of rain overnight for some of us. But Saturday and Sunday, oh yeah. That's looking good. 80 on Saturday, 84 on Sunday, nothing but sunshine. I'm going to let you know why I think this weekend could be our best of the summer.